Bonjour tout le monde. So this is lesson three in your series, still talking about where you live. And as always, you need a pen, some paper, and obviously your voice. So go and get yourself sorted and we will get started. Learning objective today is that we are looking at adjective agreement when we're describing where you live. We're looking at the question, où habites-tu? Where do you live? On your pieces of paper, can you write down a simple answer? in response to that question, où habites-tu? Off you go. Hopefully, you will have written something that looks a bit like this. J'habite à Pelso, or it might be a different place. J'habite dans un village, or maybe j'habite dans une ville. So I live in Pelso, I live in a village, or I live in a town. So that would be a nice, simple answer. Let's have a look at the two answers then that we could have used. J'habite dans un village et j'habite dans une ville. So our focus was looking at adjectives. So hopefully that you remember an adjective is a describing word. So it describes the noun. Can you think of any adjectives in English? And then can you think of any in French? So jot some down on your paper. Let's see if any of the ones I've got have you got. So these are the ones that we're going to focus on today. Intéressant, actif, tranquille, ennuyeux, nul. And there's a reason I've picked these ones specifically, because they show the different rules. So these are the adjectives that we are going to focus on. Let's have a look at the sentences. J'habite dans un village intéressant. J'habite dans une ville intéressante. So what is the difference between those two sentences? Hopefully you will have shouted out at me that one ends in an A. So we've got intéressant and intéressante. And the reason being because one is masculine and one is feminine. So what about the position? That's right, it goes after the noun and then there's that agreement that the adjective must agree with the noun. So if I was standing in front of you, I would be standing like a balance, like a scale. So I always tell you about what's on one side of the scales has to balance with the other. So you don't want them tipping one way or the other, you need them balanced. So just remember that the adjective goes after the noun and it must agree with the noun. So I've highlighted them in blue and red so you can see a little bit clearer. But what's happened now? So you can see that the actif has had to change to active. So as we know that most of the time we add an E if it's feminine, quite often there are different rules. So write down what happens to actif. What about this one? What's the rule for tranquille? Write down a rule for this one. And the next one, ennuyeux. What happens when it has to agree? And the last one, what happens to nul when it's feminine? So hopefully you'll have recognised that actif, so if it ends in IF, in the feminine version it goes to IVE, actif. Tranquille, because it already ends in an E, doesn't add another E. Ennuyeux, that EUX changes to the EUSE, so ennuyeux goes to ennuyeux. And nul in the feminine doubles the last letter and then adds the E, so it goes from nul to nul. Not much difference in the pronunciation, but obviously there is in the spelling. So they are the rules that we need to remember. So we have a look at them. You might want to make a note of this. You might want to pause the video and make a note of the two differences between the masculine and the feminine adjectives. So we go from intéressant to intéressante, actif to active, tranquille, tranquille, the same, ennuyeux to ennuyeuse, nul to nul. Right, on your pieces of paper, 
Choisis le bon adjectif. So I've given you two options, you number one to five, and decide which one you think goes with that sentence. So you need to look, is the noun masculine or feminine? So I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. Off you go. Let's have a look at the answers then. So we should have had the first one, j'habite dans un village. Nul, so the answer is highlighted in red because it's un village, it will be the masculine form. Numéro 2, j'habite dans une ville active because it's une ville, so we need the feminine one. Il y a un musée tranquille, we can't remove the E because the E is already there, so it stays the same. Ma soeur est active because ma soeur is my sister, and she's feminine, so therefore it's active. And c'est une ville ennuyeuse because it's une ville feminine. Okay, I hope you got all of the right. Now, what has happened here? So this time we've got j'habite dans un petit village, j'habite dans une grande ville. So what's different about this types of sentences to the ones that we've done before? Hopefully that you are shouting at me that they are going before the noun. So, in French, there are exceptions to this rule. So, the majority of the adjectives go after, but there are certain adjectives that go before the noun, and these are two of them. The bags rule, which is how we remember which ones go before, are for beauty, age, goodness, and size. So, if they go in those categories, they go before the noun. Examples are, c'est un joli village, Il y a un vieux musée, il est un bon garçon, il y a une petite piscine. So all of those go before. They still agree, so you still have your balance to do, whether it's masculine or feminine, but instead of going after the noun, they go before. You might want to make some notes on this. So the bag adjectives are joli and beau, jeune, vieux, nouveau, bonne, Et mauvais, petit et grand. And have a look at what those are in English. So we've got pretty, you're bored, you're handsome or beautiful. Jeune, young, vieux, old, nouveau, new. Bonne et mauvais, you're good and you're bad. And petit and grand, which you generally know already, is just small and big. If we need to make them agree, if we need to use a, if we're using a feminine noun, so we need to make them into a feminine version. So as you can see, there's the different rules there as well. So joli just adds the e. Beau changes completely to belle, as in belle, out of Beauty and the Beast because she's beautiful. Jeune stays the same because it ends in e. Vieux goes to vieille, completely different word. Nouveau goes to nouvelle. Bonne doubles the N and adds the E. Mauvais adds the E to mauvaise. Petit and grand just add the E. So there's quite a few that follow. What I want you to do then is read this through with me en français. Bon. Salut, je m'appelle Luc et j'habite à Cannock en Angleterre. J'habite dans une grande ville et j'aime où j'habite. Dans ma ville, il y a un grand musée mais il n'y a pas de château. Il y a aussi un joli forêt et on peut faire des randonnées ici. Cependant, dans le futur, je voudrais habiter en Espagne parce qu'on peut nager dans la mer et il y a des villes intéressantes. Très bien. Ok, you're going to need to pause the video because what I want you to do is to write down the translation of that paragraph into English, please. You should, having used the last few lessons, the two lessons that we've done before, be able to translate it fairly easily. There might be some gaps, but on the whole, you should be okay. So pause me, translate, and then we'll go through it. Let's have a look then. So underneath, here we go, we have the translation. So you should have had, hi, I am called Luke, and I live in Cannock in England. I live in a big town and I like where I live. In my town there is a big museum but there isn't a castle. There is also a pretty forest and you can go hiking here. However, in the future I would like to live in... Au revoir et à bientôt.